My name is Mark John. I'm the director of uh, Mission Foundation 25. But today we are at the Bethel Farm, and uh, Bethel Farm is part of uh, one of the arm in Project 25. And in Bethel Farm, we set up this place as a demonstration farm to make it to make it a center of agricultural excellency in theory, in practical, that we transform nations. Our mission in the community for the community to empower the generation through education and capacity training that will impact to build agriculturally responsible people. One of our achievements is this. Bethel Farm has successfully trained internship students from Nile University, Makerere University, Innovative Institute of Agriculture and Business and Capacity Building here in Arua. So uh, one of our last intake is that we are able to take about 24 students uh, from various agricultural institutes that come here to do their internship and they've been trained both in microponics, hydroponics, aquaponics and uh, piggery and poultry and uh, uh, various kind of horticulture here in the farm. One of the things we do at the farm here is that we do container gardening. As you can see, we have lettuce in the, that we can plant on different levels. Uh, the first level, the second level and the third level. And uh, all these, uh, we plant lettuce, uh, we also plant sukumawiki on the tires. And uh, as you can see, the container gardening, the reason why we do it is because we work among the refugees and the refugees they are given a limited amount of space to grow their vegetables so we show them how to make a, a vertical garden and a horizontal garden uh, to be able to help them uh, produce much vegetable as much as they can and this can be able to sustain family in terms of nutrition. One of our goals is to exhibit and to train people to become successful in agricultural entrepreneurship. Our major objective for setting up a better farm is to set up a successful enterprise that will inspire, motivate people to undertake agricultural projects as a means of sustainable livelihood. And also we raise our own seedlings and that is uh, green pepper, it's called California Wonder. So those are our seedlings that are inside uh, getting ready to be transplanted. This is our microponics. Uh, microponics is a symbiotic integration of fish, plant and chicken together. And uh, as you can see, the chicken are up, the fish are down, and uh, by the side is the plant. So when the chicken drop in, drops into the, into the fish pond, the fish benefit from the from the droppings of the chicken and right here as you can see we have our submersive pump and from our submersive pump we ta it takes it down to the mechanical filter from the mechanical filter it goes to the biological filter from the biological filter it goes to the grow bed and from the grow bed it comes back to the fish as a clean water so all here is a semi-controlled environment whereby there are less use of chemicals and uh, Everything we do here grows organically. This is our deep culture aquaponics. It's a variation. The variation of this system where plants are grown in water and fish are raised in the same water. This creates a symbiotic relationship between the two where the waste from the fish provide a nutrient for the plant while the plant filter the water creating a healthy environment for the fish. So this is the setup that we do and uh, the dimension is uh, seven and a half meters by six meters. We have close to 120 plants on it and if you can see the fish are, they are doing very good and the plants are looking very healthy. All these are the nutrients from the fish. So hydroponics is a sustainable and innovative way of agriculture that uses water and nutrients to grow plants. The approach aimed to showcase the benefit of hydroponics is to encourage individuals and business to adopt this technique. It's a traditional farming that involves growing plants in soil. However, hydroponics offers an alternative way of growing plants without soil, which is more efficient and sustainable. Hydroponic is a technique that uses water and nutrients to grow plants, making it an eco-friendly way of farming. And it is the best way of farming because it's a soilless farming. It only consists of the, the use of nutrients. So we use in, uh, in Uganda here, what we use is called DI crew. 
So I use the agro to grow this plant in a soilless way. This is our Azola plant, and uh, as you can see, this is Azola, and Azola uh, has been extensively used for nitrogen fertilizer, but in a special paddy cultivation to reduce cost of cultivation and increase paddy yield. Azola is a we use it for to feed our livestock, such as uh, poultry, uh, pigs, goats, uh, and fish. But mainly, we use our Azola plant for our fish as a feed because Azola has high rate of protein in it. This is aqua, our aquaponic section. Um, as you can see, uh, the practical aspect is that you can see in this aquaponic section, we use Azola as a feed for the fish, uh, which is, uh, you can say, practically on top of the water. But in this aquaponic section, what is aquaponic, if we stand to talk about? It's a sustainable and innovative way of growing plants and fish together in a closed-loop system. Aquaponics combine aquaculture and hydroponics, creating a mutual benefit relationship between plant and fish. Aquaponics can grow various plants, include vegetable fruit, herbs, and flower. It can also raise multiple fish, such as tilapia, trout, and catfish. But basically what we grow here is mostly catfish due to uh, the power supply in the farm. So we discovered that catfish is more tougher and we decided to use uh, catfish for our, aqu uh, our aquaponics. This makes a versatile system that can be adapted to suit a different needs based on the environment. Aquaponics produce higher products than traditional farming methods, allowing a precise control of nutrient, water, and light. This creates a healthier plant and fewer pests and diseases, leading to high yields. It can also be a healthier fish that can grow faster than the traditional aquaculture system. So in this section particularly, the aquaponics, the fish releases the, uh, uh, the ammonia and it helps the plant to grow better. As you can see, the plants in here are very healthy plants. So this is our screen house, whereby we do the watermelons and uh, we do what they call the garden egg. In Uganda, they call it a tula. But uh, these are a little bit bigger. This a tula is actually from West Africa. And uh, it's a little, big, a little bit bigger than the one from uh, the Uganda, uh, the one from Uganda. Yeah, my name is Hope Atizio. I work with Bethel Farm and here our tomatoes. We have grown here tomatoes. The variety is Star F1 and the other side is Anzuel. And the growing of tomato is not based on the variety but is based on the type or is based on the habit of the plant. And we have, this is Star F1 and then this is Anzuel. Star F1 is determinant tomato. We have two types of tomatoes, indeterminate and determinant. Why I say determinant is because it bears fruits in the main branches and then the yield is determined. And then for indeterminate, the yield is not determined. For determinant, it is bushy. And then when you look at the indeterminate one, is non-bushy. We started raising these tomatoes when they were still at their vegetative growth. We know there are three types of stages in plants. We have vegetative stage, we have changeover period, and production stage. 
during the vegetative stage of plants, especially tomatoes, uh, there are a lot of things that you need to do for you, for you to make sure that they grow healthy or they have all the nutrients that it needs in their vegetative growth. There are so much activities that you have to be doing in their vegetative growth. You can give them vegetative, we have foliar fertilizers, we also have basil fertilizers that you can put for basil, you can put directly in the soil and then foliar you spray to the tomatoes. During the vegetative uh, growth of plants, plants need a lot of nitrogen. So you need to give them a lot of nitrogen so that they can grow healthy and they can grow without deficiencies. As you're growing tomatoes, when the tomato is already day one or the first day you're planting them, you can put them DAP. DAP is the ammonium phosphate fertilizer. It helps in proper root penetration into the soil. As you plant your tomatoes, the first day you can put them DAP as fertilizer and then you after three days of putting that that's when you can put in your plant and then when your plant is one week after transplanting you give them urea urea is just a booster it boosts the crops it makes the crops to grow healthy and then it in crop crops grow faster when you give them urea also and then two weeks when they're already 14 days in the field that's when you can give them can can is calcium ammonium nitrate. This calcium will help in clearing of blossom and rot disorders. Is also calcium can also be one of the deficiencies, and then the cause you see is blossom end rot. When your tomatoes are attacked with blossom end rot, just know it's deficiency of calcium. And then you can also prevent that by watering your plants. You water it thoroughly you water the plants thoroughly. The soil has to be moist constantly so that you don't see blossom end rot. Okay, thank you. This is BSF, the black soda flies. And here in this production, we get our maggots that we use for feeding fish, for feeding pigs, for feeding chicken. And here in this cage, we put our black soda flies and we get our eggs inside here and we harvest the eggs after three days. Those three days we transfer them into this small vial. Then we put it here, we provide it with the mesh bran where we, we hatch them after four days. Then reaching that four days and then we transfer into this big barrel where we feed them with the organic waste that we collect from the market and reaching to 13 to 18 days this is where we now use for feeding the chicken, the fish and the, the pigs. Generally the, the maggots we get protein, protein which is about 50% not only protein, but we can get fats, we can get calcium, we can get uh, uh, potassium, and even magnesium. Those are the things that we get from these uh, maggots, which are so good that makes all the, the animals that I mentioned, like chicken, fish, and the pigs to grow faster, especially the young ones, which are still raising them. So. We get them grow faster and uh, we are so proud to have this production in Battle Farm. And uh, yeah, this is generally what is here. And the process takes like uh, 40 days because it is that because it is a cycle from eggs, then to the larvae, then from the larvae to the pupa, then pupa to the adults, which are which we call black soda flies. And this is what is here. Thank you very much. My name is I'm called Invika Violet. I'm Duaru Scholar. Here we have various types of chicken to be reared here. One we have black chicken, we have Indian broilers, and we have silk chicken. And this chicken is called silk bandam. It's a disease resistant and we normally keep it for meat and egg production. Ha <laughs> ha
Okay, these are we have local chicken, the normal have black colors and some spotted of white. Thank you.